Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline for Adobe Premiere Pro. Today, we're going to talk about time and how, in fact, you can control time inside Premiere Pro. Fortunately, there's lots of options to change the speed of clips. Premiere has two notable ways, and you can jump on over to Adobe After Effects for even more control. Let's take a look at how it works. I've got a clip here in the timeline, and I just want to do a simple retime to begin with. Well, I can come on over, grab the Rate Stretch tool, and what this allows me to do is click at the end here and just grab. And you see it's telling me up there how many seconds are being added to the shot and the new duration. So if I needed the shot to run 11 seconds, but I only had 7 seconds to begin with, I can make it work. And if we take that back and play it, you see that the shot has been slowed down. Cool thing about Premiere Pro, unlike other NLEs, is it actually does some really cool frame blending there to smooth out when you have speed effects. Other NLEs really prefer that you stick with numbers like 50% speed or 25% speed, otherwise it starts to look really choppy and stuttery. Premiere Pro does a pretty good job on its own. Now, that's fine, but what happens if you wanted a variable speed effect? Well, for that, you've got time remapping, both in Premiere Pro and in After Effects. Let's take a look at both. Time remapping can be accessed by clicking on your clip, and I recommend that you take this here and turn on time remapping to see the speed value. And what this allows you to do is assign speed. So I could say, you know what? This first part here, I want that to go a little faster. So I'll add a keyframe, and I could drag this up or down. You see there, I told it to go faster and the clip got shorter. So what happens here, let's twirl down and look, you see that the clip has been retimed 146%. Well, that's fine, but maybe I want that to not be the whole time. So we could say, all right, let's start here and go a little bit faster until you come in, and then slow down and take your time leaving the frame. So I add another keyframe here, and we can actually drag down. And you see that it slows down, sticking and making the clip longer. Now let's just pull this other shot out of the way here a bit and play that. Okay? Now that slowed down, and that's fine. Instead of adjusting those values first, I'm going to add two keyframes and then change their values, and you see we can get a variable effect. So let's just choose undo a little bit here. Get that back to normal. There we go. Got our clip selected. Good. Double click so it's loaded. And let's just twirl down speed here. Now, we can add a keyframe. To do that is pretty simple. Put the playhead or current time indicator where you want to assign the speed change and click. You see it adds this little marker here. Then go a little further down and click to add another one. With these two markers, you can now adjust the speed going in or out. So I'm going to come here up front and start to drag down and you see that it's slowing down. Or I could drag up, and it's going to get to that point of time faster. So what I just did here is sped up the amount of time it took him to get into the frame. And then, all of a sudden, it went from 140% speed to 100 speed. Well, that's kind of abrupt. To smooth out that transition is easy. You just take these and spread them apart, and that creates a transition zone. So now it's at 140, and then it starts to transition down until it hits 100%. That's all fine and well, and we're going to get right here. And what I want to do here is actually slow it down further. So I'm going to drag down to about 50%. And you see that the clip got longer. We can now spread that out to create a transition zone. There we go. Let's watch that clip. Starts at 140%, transitions to 100, 
slows down at the very end. And that's really quite cool. The ability to variably control the rate of time. To have one speed transition into another frame rate and then even slow it down altogether and come to a gradual stop. If you set that to 0%, you can even freeze frame in midair and sort of hold the action or freeze it. And that's pretty cool. Remember, drag those apart to create a transition zone. Now, if that's not enough for you, After Effects has its own time remapping, and you could take advantage of that too. Let's just scroll down here to this last instance of the clip. We'll drop it in the timeline once more. We're just going to lasso that clip, and I'm going to go ahead and send that to After Effects via dynamic link. Adobe Dynamic Link, replace with After Effects Composition. Now that's going to swap that out, ask for a name here, let's just save it in the right folder. We'll call this speed, that one shot is swapped, and I could go ahead there and edit that, edit original. There we go. I am inside of After Effects, I've got my composition, and now we could tweak it. Looks good. Let's turn on time remapping. Layer, time, enable time remapping. Now After Effects treats it a little bit differently. It assigns two keyframes automatically, but gives you the ability to adjust those. So right now, this shot was about seven seconds. I can go ahead and extend this here all the way out to 20. And what happens is, is it plays through all the frames and then freezes. Well, maybe we want to create a little pause here. So I can go right here and add a keyframe. I could then add another keyframe right after that. I've got that value there. Let's just expand this out. We can go ahead and copy. We'll edit that value there. Copy and paste. And now it's going to hold between those two keyframes. If we want to really slow out the back end there, just drag this further apart. So now it goes through at a normal speed hits a freeze frame moment and is going to pause and then will resume with really slow motion. To smooth that all out, I recommend this. We'll right click on this first one here and choose Ease In and that's going to come to a gradual stop. We'll then choose this one and choose Ease Out and that's going to leave it gently. And then between here we'll just tell this one to also ease in to a gradual stop. So if we preview that, you're going to see it. it's going to work out pretty nicely. It goes at a normal speed, pauses, then resumes in slow motion with a gradual ramp up. That's really quite cool, and that's time remapping in After Effects, which makes it pretty easy to do things. Now you're saying, I could probably do that over in Premiere Pro. Fact is you can. The big difference here is how you blend the frames. If you want really smooth motion, even beyond the high quality that Premiere Pro gives you, just take advantage of two key options. Turn on frame blending for the composition, then flip frame blending from the draft mode to full quality mode. Now when you do that, things get really cool. So let's take a look at this here at half quality. We'll tell it to play all frames and we'll preview that. And what you're going to see is, is that After Effects literally morphs between one frame and the next. This takes a while to render, but it truly gives you the smoothest slow motion. This by far is the best way to change the speed of a clip. It's going to add some pretty decent render time, but it's not going to do any stuttering or skipping or frame blending. Rather, it's going to sort of morph between the frames and give you a really smooth motion for the video file. So let's look at that there. Look how smooth that is. That looks really good there. 
I'll keep previewing that a little bit more. So it finishes out a little bit. You can see that freeze frame. There we go. Look how that just comes to a gentle melting sort of stop. Really smooth. No jagged, no stuttering. You know, comes in there and stops and holds. And then it's going to ramp back up. There it is. Freeze. And then it ramps back into full motion. And that looks really good. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, this is a piece of cake. After Effects and Premiere work really well together. When you're done here, you can just close that and tell it to save. And when you jump on in back to Premiere Pro, it's going to update, and that's going to be right inside of there. And there it is. Now, that shot got a little longer, so I could drag that out. But look, there's everything I told it to do. The speed changes and all of that are right there in the comp. And I may have to preview that to see it, but it's their piece of cake. Jump back and forth between After Effects and Premiere all day long, thanks to Dynamic Link. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Video Adrenaline for Adobe Premiere Pro. My name is Rich Harrington, and I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net, where there's a ton of great tutorials, as well as a really extensive magazine that's going to teach you to make better looking professional video. Thanks for joining us.